Hi there, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equation. This is a bonus video for the video number 9 in chapter 9, where the topic is partial differential equations. So in video 9 of chapter 9, we um, derived the formal solution for the Laplace equation in 2D in a rectangular domain, and where we um, assigned the uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. Um, the problem setting is given here in the previous video where we solved it um, by cutting it into four sub-problems. So in this video we will look at a slightly different way of deriving the solution. Okay, so um, let's um, remark that for the boundaries, now I call this boundary function f of x, and this is g of x, and then this is phi of y, and this is psi of y. If you have seen the previous video, chapter 9, video number 9, then um, in whatever I will cover in this video would be um, just a slight change and you shall be able to follow this video rather easily. Okay, so we still break the problem up into now only two sub-problems. We call them P1 and P2. So for P1, we keep two of the non-homogeneous boundary conditions. And if you look at this, that's where y equals f, and uh, this is where y equals 0. And then we put the other two to be 0. That's where x is a and y is 0. So we see those are the two um, vertical lines of the rectangle, and these are the horizontal lines. And then for problem 2, we reverse the rows. So now these two will be homogeneous, the two horizontal sides, and then these two would take the non-homogeneous value. And then the idea, um, the remaining idea is the same. Um, let's say for problem one and problem two, we have found the solution, we call it u1 and u2 then the solution for the original problem with the four sides non-homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition will be just the sum of these two. So the u will just be u1 plus u2. Okay. So in the previous video, we would have four of them. Now it's just a bit simplified and we have two. Okay, now in this video, we will derive the solution for u1 and we will leave the u2 as an exercise. It's completely similar there. You can just think of that you exchange the independent variable x and y and it can be carried out in the same way. Okay. So we'll be a little bit brief here. So step one, separate the variables. This remains the same. You put in the solution of this form and then you can write it like that, the Laplace equation, and then you can separate the variables, or the x here, or the y here, and they must equal to a constant. Then we'll get two ODEs, one for the f and one for the g, and because of our choice of the boundary condition, we will want to make this the eigenvalue problem to solve. Okay, so for the f, we know that at x equals 0, it's 0, at x equal a is 0. So that's an eigenvalue problem, which we know the solutions. So there are infinitely many eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. So the eigenfunctions are sine functions. Okay, and then for each given n, we can find a solution for the g and which is this equation, and then the general solution is an exponential growth and combined with an exponential decay. So up to here, it's all the same. And now we immediately put all these together and form the eigenfunction. So we'll wait until the end to fit in the two boundary conditions on the two sides that are non-homogeneous. Okay, that's the difference. So let's put them together. Here we have the eigenfunction, the product of these two. Plug in the expression uh, we have here for g and then for f, we get that. 
and then we form the formal solution in in terms of a series and then you put them in that's the function so here now we have a n and the b n are two constants and actually a bunch of them and we don't know what they are and that will be um derived in the last step Okay, so now let's find the A and B ends by the two non-homogeneous boundary conditions. So the first one is um, when y is 0, this is the function gx. And then you put it in y equals 0, and then exponential give you 1 and 1. So you get just A n plus B n plus the sine function x equals gx. And then at y equal b, and then the, the g function takes this form, put it in y to be b, and times sine omega nx, and that shall equal to fx. And then we make similar um, observation that this here is a Fourier sine series for g, where a m plus b n is the coefficient. So we can write a m plus b n equal to this b g, that's the Fourier sine series coefficient for the function g with index f and this we know the formula so that's what i put here and then for this second equation we see it's also a fully assigned series but now for the function f with this as coefficient so we know that now this must e equal to the coefficient um, this is the fully assigned coefficient for the function f of x which we denote with this shorthand. Okay, and then we see that we have two um, equations a, for a n and b n, two unknowns, and these are two linear equations, and it's easily solved because that's just a number, and that is just a number. You can just simply do Gaussian elimination or whichever is your favorite method. You can find the expression for a n, and you can find the expression for b n. So for example, to find the expression for a n, you can multiply the first equation by this coefficient here, and then you subtract it from the second one, and then you can find a n. Okay? And once you have that, then you basically solved the subproblem u1. Okay? And then you go ahead and solve the subproblem for u2, reversing the row of x and y, meaning that you will find the eigenvalue problem for the one with y as a variable first, and then carry out a completely um, analogous um, algorithm as this one, and you will get your solution, and that's it. Okay, so um, that's that, and um, just a short video, some extra comments on this topic, and uh, that's it for the Laplace equation. Uh, next time we'll go back to the wave equation. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.